Greetings in the name of the triune God who is always with us. I am Debbie Bartley and I continue to be honored and humbled to serve as one of First St. Charles Associate Pastors. And we gather around our picnic table again as we continue our journey through Bishop Olivedo's book, Together at the Table. So last time I left you with an invitation to be in prayer and an empathy exercise, and I would love to hear in the comments about your experiences, whether you prayed every day for someone different from you by name. Did you pray on June 19th, Saturday, for our sisters and brothers of color, for an end to systemic racism, for equality for all? Did you pray to be open to the possibility that you might need a change of heart and God's help? And if you were in a store or another place of public space, did you practice offering empathy towards someone different from you? Again, please share your stories in the comments. So this session, we're going to look at leaning into ambiguity and embracing our diversity. Now, in our Western culture, we tend to live in a binary world. Have you ever thought about it? A world of primarily only two ways of looking at things. Yes, no, up, down, black, white, here, there, right, left. Bishop Olivedo asserts that with these binary thoughts come judgment, that one is better than the other, and that there's no room for middle ground or for ambiguity. Now, it is not easy to open up ourselves to people who might be just challenging our perceived binary world, our way of looking at things. It's not easy for me. How about you? So the bishop shares that relationships have the power to break through the walls we build and the misconceptions we hold. Now, I discovered that truth during my seminary education at Eden Theological Seminary in Webster Groves here in the St. Louis metropolitan area. Eden is one of the United Church of Christ seminaries. Now the United Church of Christ or UCC is an open and affirming mainline denomination, meaning that they affirm the full inclusion of all people into the life and ministry of the church, including LGBTQ persons may be ordained as clergy in their denomination. So, as degrees from Eden are acknowledged by our United Methodist Church, I chose Eden, and it is a great seminary to attend in this area. So I had been told that seminary would take everything that I thought I knew, wad it up, throw it out the window, and challenge me to think and learn in new ways. That is a truth. Now, many of my classmates were from UCC congregations all over the country. I find my, found myself in a community that was a safe haven for LGBTQ persons seeking to be ordained. Being in community with so many LGBTQ persons was totally new to me. From my first moments on Eden's campus, I was in new territory, academically, spiritually, and socially. I was overwhelmed. And I remember thinking that very first day of orientation, what have I gotten myself into? Well, silly me, the better question would have been, what has God gotten me into? To say that I was twisted, pulled, uncomfortable, unsure, nervous, anxious, would have been true. I was afraid I'd say the wrong thing. I was afraid I wouldn't know what to say. It was awkward. And I was trying to succeed academically too. And yet what a wonderful, humbling, relationship building time it was. My preconceived ideas and judgments went out the window. And one of the greatest takeaways I remember is thinking, my LGBTQ classmates are better prayers than me. They are awesome preachers. They are awesome children of God. Their call and their gifts are the same as mine. 
just as valid as mine. We are all the same. And I was transformed. I was honored to be their colleague and to be seen with them. May we all be free to be who we are and to be seen for who we are. Now what I admired most were my colleagues' willingness to be transparent about themselves. They were in a safe place in seminary, yet they were preparing to serve churches. They knew that sharing their gender orientation and gender identity might come with rejection even within their own UCC denomination, and most probably in their cities and communities. Now, Bishop Alavedo states that vulnerability always carries the risk of rejection and hurt. For that reason, people live their lives in closets, scared to let the world, their families, their friends know who they are. I cannot imagine living my life in a closet and not being able to fully be myself, to deny myself, my personhood, because of somebody else's perspective. Now, Bishop Olivedo acknowledges that her presence as an Episcopal leader can be an affront to what others know to be true. In their minds, there is no room for another truth to exist. There can be no ambiguity, so the question becomes, can they coexist? Now, our presence in each other's lives, says Bishop Olivedo, present invitations, invitations to grow as we encounter more of God's world through the gifts we bring each other through our differences. As such, she says, the grace of God flows in unpredictable ways. We are called to follow. And when we do so, everything we know might be called into question. Yet God's love will help us walk in a world that is unpredictable and confusing. Bishop Olivedo shares a quote from Progressive Insurance. If you do not intentionally include, you unintentionally exclude. So let's think about that a minute. Those that we don't include are excluded. Those that we don't invite to our table are excluded from our table. And as the bishop says, diversity is not easy to live into. We will be confronted with our own ignorance. Sometimes we're going to be embarrassed or ashamed as we begin to know what we didn't know. I think back to my time at Eden, especially those very early months. So when we open ourselves to the diversity found in the lives and the people around us, we find ourselves standing on holy ground. We learn that God speaks through those who aren't like us and sometimes provides us with our deepest spiritual lessons. The world becomes more precious, full of surprises, that enrich our lives. Love is let loose in the world, and this love changes everything. So I leave you with another empathy exercise. Look at someone for whom you might be ready to make an unkind judgment and tell yourself, she is someone's daughter. She is someone's daughter. She is someone's daughter. And then feel free to share in the comments how you felt afterwards. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to step away from our binary worlds of rights and wrongs. Help us to see the world as you see it, to live into ambiguity and to embrace our diversity. Help us to help all people feel safe, welcome, and wanted. Help us to know and to live as if all really and truly does mean all, just like you see us. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So my friends, let's invite everyone to the table so we can share God's grace and love with everyone. Let's continue to stay safe. Let's continue to connect with each other as we continue to connect with God. 
And let's continue to share God's love and grace with everyone today, tomorrow, and every day. God bless.